The devil does not have authority over you. You have authority over the devil. And that is scripture. And scripture cannot be broken. The demons you're afraid of are afraid of you. I don't know to whom they pray. But the devil is praying that you never discover this truth. We go to church every day. We talk about the devil. We celebrate the devil. We've, we've built this big thing. We, we've magnified the mole rat and made him into a mammoth. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome to our show, The Marvelous Believers Show. Uh, that comes to you every Monday at 9.45. We are so excited that you have found time to tune in, whatever time it is in your zone. We are so excited that you are here, and I know the word that is coming forth is going to change you. It is a life-transforming word. The word of God is life and its spirit. And so as we get into the show, I want you to open your mind, open your spirit, because God has something for you. I am your host, Lucy Lepore, and tonight I am uh, so excited to have our guest in the studio. Some of you are very familiar with him. We started these shows with him. He started the shows, uh, the Marvelous Believers shows. So if you didn't start with us, I believe after this you can still go back from the beginning. There are so many messages that we have recorded with Pastor Ben Isaac from the Gospel Epicenter Uganda. And so I am so excited that he is able to be with us again. And uh, I believe God is speaking to us. God is changing us every day as we listen to these messages. So uh, without wasting too much time, I just want to take this time to appreciate you, Pastor, for being here with us and also to allow you just to take over. Thank you very much. And I would like to welcome every one of you who is tuning in right now. Please share these messages with as many people as you can. And before I can continue with what I want to say today, I would like to remind you that these things we are speaking are not the opinions of men. Everything we are saying is based on scripture. And the Bible says scripture cannot be broken. The Bible says God is not a man. Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie. So when we speak these things, we, this is not up for debate. This is not up for, you know, how many of you are voting yay? How many of you are voting nay? This is absolute truth. And God is not a man to lie. The Bible says that it is impossible for God to lie. The Bible says God cannot lie. The Bible says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The Bible talks about the Holy Spirit being the spirit of truth. So what we are bringing to you today is the absolute truth. And what you can do with truth is you align yourself with it and don't contradict God. The secret to favor with God is don't contradict God. When he says something to you or about you, say, yes, Lord, be like Mary. Mary said, be it unto me according to your word. Now, the next four messages are going to fall in um, a title called You Are Superior to Satan. And I want you to read with me. Luke chapter 10, verse 17. That's where we're going to start. Luke chapter 10, verse 17. The Bible says, Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. The old King James Bible says, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. Jesus, Jesus had sent out a certain group of disciples, about 70 of them, and he had sent them ahead of him to go and preach the gospel of the kingdom in places where he himself was coming. And he had given them express orders to heal the sick and cast out demons and all that kind of thing. If you are to read, read that part of the Bible, it is very possible that this was the first time he is sending this group of people. And like many people it is very possible that these people were afraid of demons but then they found that when they went to this mission when they spoke in the name of jesus demons of all kinds ran 
They screamed rain and left people. And the result was people were healed, people were delivered, and lives were made better. And so they came back with a crusade report or whatever you want to call it, mission report. And they were so excited. The Bible says they returned with joy. And they said, Lord, can you imagine even the demons, even the devils, the things we were afraid of, they are now afraid of us. They were subject, they were subservient to us through your name. When we mentioned your name, demons of all kinds were subservient. They ran, they, they, they obeyed us when we gave the command. Now come back here. That is a revelation that every marvelous believer should have. That the devils of all kinds, all demons in all their ranks, on the authority of scripture, all the demons in all their ranks are subject to you if you're a Christian, if you're a marvelous believer, if you have given your life to Christ, if you are in Christ, if you are born again. I want to say this. You should make this your confession. You should say it as often as possible until you actually believe it. Lord, even the devils are subject to us through your name. Demons of all kinds. Some people are so expert, they have all these classes of demons written down. They know them. It doesn't matter the big ones, the small ones, the hairy ones, the bold ones, the fat ones, the thin ones, the Chinese ones, the Ugandan ones, the, the American ones. All devils are subject to you through the name of Jesus Christ. So the name of Jesus gives you an edge over all demons. It doesn't matter whether they scream, whether they're whispering, whether they're slithering, whether they're crawling, whether they're jumping, leaping. All demons are subject to you through the name of Jesus Christ, and that is scripture. Now, I want also to say this, that the Lord Jesus never promised the believer defeat at any time. There is no place in the New Testament where God even suggests that the devil would defeat you. There is no suggestion. The marvelous believer is what someone would call a devil master. You, if you're a Christian and you're in Christ, even if you got saved yesterday, God sees you as a devil master. You are a devil master. You are the commander of demons. What you speak is what they will obey. Amen. On the authority of the scriptures, Satan and all his army of demon slaves are inferior, all of them, they are inferior to the marvelous believer. And I'm going to show you some scriptures in the Bible to, to, to back what I'm saying. Now, it doesn't matter where the devil is, it doesn't matter who he is, it doesn't matter what he looks like. All the devil is, according to the Bible, he's an empty roar. He is a toothless, empty roar as far as the believer is concerned. I want you to turn with me in your Bible in uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. The Bible says that for this cause, for this reason, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, was manifested that he may destroy the works of the devil. Everything the devil did, Jesus Christ was manifested. Now, listen, this is 2022. Jesus showed up here over 2,000 years ago. But the reason he showed up was to destroy the works of the devil, name them sickness, disease. I've always told you about human suffering. People have problems without solutions. People have diseases without remedies. People have fears without faith. People have guilt without pardon. People wallowing, having all kinds of problems. And Jesus Christ, and all these things are not done by God. These are all works of the devil. If you find anything wrong with humanity, we tie it to the devil. And Jesus Christ, the Bible says, was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. My question is one, was Jesus manifested? Number two, did he do what the Bible says he came to do? So Jesus Christ was manifested to destroy that scripture manifested is in the past tense. There are some people <laughs> who are trying to destroy the works of the devil. So what did Jesus do? Okay, let's, let me leave that for you. I want to read you another scripture, and I want to read it in three different versions of Bible. For Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. I want you to listen very carefully in... Uh, this is what the Good News Bible, today's English translation, this is what it says. On that cross, 
Christ freed himself from the power of spiritual rulers and authorities. He made a public spectacle of them by leading them as captives in his victory procession. That is the Good News Bible. Now, the Amplified Bible says this. God disarmed the principalities and powers that were ranged against us and he made a bold display and public example of them in triumphing over them in the cross. Now I want you to listen to this. This is the Message Bible. He, Jesus, stripped all spiritual tyrants in the universe of their sham authority at the cross and he marched them naked through the streets. I want to read it again in the Message Bible. Jesus stripped all the spiritual tyrants in the universe of their sham authority at the cross and he marched them naked through the streets. Did you get that? The, good, uh, the, the, the King James Bible says something like, he spoiled, Jesus Christ spoiled principalities and powers. He made a public show of them and he triumphed over them in the cross. And it's all past tense. So you see the man hanging on the cross crying, Abba, Father, Lema Sabachthani, Eli, Eli, you know, he's crying. People can only see the man crying on the cross. But what Jesus was doing in the unseen realm is that he went into the hell hole and he grabbed the devil. Allow me to use my own words. Pulled out his fangs, dehorned him, messed him up. The Bible says he stripped him, disarmed him of all his equipment. His ability to steal, kill and destroy. And it is in the past tense. Now, Paul is speaking with the picture of the armies of the Roman Empire. This is what these guys would do. I was watching a documentary recently. These guys would go and invade enemy territory. And for them to prove that they defeated the enemy armies, they would get the general in the enemy territory and they would remove his big toes. They would cut them off and they would chop off his big thumbs. And they would strip him of all his equipment, all his weapons. They would remove everything. They would strip him naked, like, like in an Adam's suit, completely naked. And they would tie him with chains. They would bind him hand and foot with his entire army, of, 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 of his entire army, the army that he was commanding. And they would march them from that foreign country, and they would march them into their own country for everybody to see. You see what we've done to these people, they are all defeated. The Bible says Jesus Christ grabbed the devil and he defeated him and all his demon slaves. The big ones and the small ones. The principalities, the powers. Some of you know classes of demons, all the echelons of demons. He defeated all of them. The Bible says he paralyzed them. He made a public spectacle of them. The message Bible says he marched them in the streets naked. I am trying to show you what the devil is. This thing you're running away from is actually running away from you. The devil does not have authority over you. You have authority over the devil. And that is scripture. And scripture cannot be broken. The demons you're afraid of are afraid of you. I don't know to whom they pray. But the devil is praying that you never discover this truth. The revelation of the marvelous believer is the devil. It doesn't matter what color he is, black, pink, purple. They are all inferior to you. Demons of disease, demons of fear, demons of death. Dem they are all inferior to you. Jesus Christ disarmed them from the boss, from their headmaster to the lowest of them. They are all defeated. That is on the authority of scripture. The, the strange thing is some Christians are trying to resurrect the demons. The devil is defeated whether you believe it or not. On the authority of scripture, the devil is defeated. And that is my obsession today to tell you about your authority over demons and devils. Amen. Now, I want to show you another scripture. I may need your Bible. I want you to turn with me to Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14. 
it's strange, but it's actually in your Bible and it's written in the past tense. I want to read for you Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14. Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself, Jesus, likewise shared in the same. In other words, Jesus Christ became a human being. He shared in the same. He partook flesh and blood. Why? That through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil. And release those who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Question, did Jesus put on flesh and blood? Did he come down here? He finished his mission. And the mission was to destroy him who had the... I, I don't know where people get this idea of this all-powerful devil. The Bible says he's been destroyed. I did not write the Bible. The devil is defeated. Jesus did a good job of destroying he that had the power of death. And that is the revelation of the marvelous believer. What you can do with truth is agree with God in your speech, in your thoughts, in your actions. Never think of a devil that is powerful. If you're a Christian, let the non-Christians worry about the devil. I told you that the marvelous believer is a devil master. Devil master. He destroyed in the past tense he that had the power of death and he puts it there. The devil, that is the devil. He destroyed. <laughs> there is no Greek and Hebrew to explain away this scripture. It is exactly what it's saying. Jesus Christ was manifested. He put on flesh and blood like one of us. And the reason he did that was so he could die. Now the devil thought Jesus Christ has been destroyed by dying. But actually through death, Jesus Christ destroyed. <laughs> he destroyed he that had the power of death. Let me tell you, all these diseases caused by demons and devils, all these problems, all the wars, all the, every human suffering, the atrocities the demons have done in the world. Jesus Christ has come and he has dealt with he who perpetuated these things. And it's in the scripture. And, and, and I, want to, I want to continue uh, in a few minutes. I want you to see something. Whether you believe it or not, Jesus Christ did a good job of defeating the devil and his demon slaves. The defeat of Satan, spoken of in the New Testament, is, is spoken about in the past tense. Jesus is not coming to destroy the devil. Jesus Christ did a good job of it over 2,000 years ago. And it's in the past, and the devil is defeated. And I want to emphasize this. Jesus Christ did not defeat the devil for himself. Jesus Christ was not under the authority of the devil. You and I, and all the generations of human beings from Adam to the baby who will be born last. It is we who were under the demon rule. So Jesus Christ came to defeat the devil on our behalf, in our state and in our name. When you get born again, you defeated the devil. You are superior to Satan. You are the devil master. Shake yourself free of the fear that has been spread by the devil and be who God says you are. You are the marvelous believer. I repeat, Jesus Christ did not defeat the devil for himself because he was not, in the first place, he was not under the authority of Satan. Jesus Christ came to become you. Amen. But we... When I say we, I'm just using that gen generically. I'm, I'm not including myself, but allow me to say we. We have given the devil so much power. We have given the devil so much authority. We are afraid of demons. We talk about the demons. We celebrate demons. We sing songs. If, song, if a song is not about the devil, it's not a good song. We go to church every day. We talk about the devil. We celebrate the devil. We've, we've built this big thing. We, we've magnified the mole rat and made him into a mammoth. Are you listening? It's very important that the church, the Christians, through wrong teaching, through ignorance, we have magnified the devil. And so by accepting 
and acknowledging and believing and talking too much about demons. People have, in quotes, empowered the devil to continue stealing and killing and destroying. You know, the more you talk about something, the more you magnify it. You know, the more you talk about fear, the more fear becomes pronounced. It's the same thing we spoke about when we spoke about awakening to righteousness. When you preach sin, people will become conscious of sin and they'll keep falling into sin. When you preach righteousness, people will become conscious of righteousness and then people will do righteous things. Now, if you talk about the demons or demon this, it's almost like this rhyme kids used to sing in nursery school. Oh, 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 MacDonald had a farm. Here, here, oh, on that farm he had demons. Here, here, oh, demon here, demon there, everywhere, demon, demon, oh, MacDonald. You talk about demons all the time. That is exactly, you will see it in your dreams. You will see it everywhere. Demons everywhere. Let's talk about the glory of God. Let's talk about Jesus Christ. How about angels? How, how, about, the, how about the kingdom of God? No, we are not rubbishing the fact that there is a demon or there are devils. But this issue, we are so obsessed with this demon thing. Until demons are everywhere, the devil has now become omnipresent. The demon has now, devil has become omnipotent. <laughs> Listen. The marvelous believer is superior to Satan. Write that down and never forget it. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, what a joy to learn and to discover that you have spoiled principalities and powers. On our behalf, in our name, in our place, we walk in this revelation that we are more than conquerors. We walk in this revelation that now we know how to deal with life's crisis. We thank you for giving us the triumph. And as I pray over these people right now, I deliver, I deliver them from whatever has been troubling them. I command sicknesses and diseases caused by demons to depart from their bodies right now. I curse you at the root. Blood, bone, skin diseases, leave them now. Diseases in their organs, diseases in their bodies, diseases in their joints, in their skins. I command you to leave them now in the name of Jesus Christ. Be free, be made every whit whole in Jesus' name. Rejoice and check yourself right now if you had a disease. Amen. And tell us about it. And we shall continue this next time. God bless you. Bye-bye.